Okay, just a mild-mannered YouTuber getting ready to do my my ranking video here. Get my Welcome to Durbania, I'm Durbin, and this is my ranking of the live-action Superman's worst to best. I'm super excited to dive into this, and I'm not going to talk about, you know, the radio show or, you know, any other voicings of Superman in animation. This is strictly live-action. Actors that have physically put on the costume, stood in front of a camera, and acted out the character. So that's what I'm going to be ranking here. I'm super excited to dive into this. How would you rank these live-action Supermans? Let's talk about it in the comments. This was the first live-action Superman, so he deserves Deserves a shout out. Never saw these Superman serials, but it's very interesting that the way they advertise these Superman serials is that they couldn't find an actor to play Superman. So they got Superman himself to do it. And I have to tell you that if I was a kid in this time, that would have been enough. I would have been sold and I would have been there every week to watch these serials as they were released. And even on YouTube when I was watching some of the scenes, this Superman would like jump in the air and then turn into a cartoon character and fly. And it rang a bell of a bell of familiarity. So it's like, it must be somewhere in my past and childhood that I saw some of this, but I don't know. It's not super familiar to me, but first live action Superman deserves a shout out. My next shout out is to John Hames Newton, who played Superboy in season one, and Gerard Christopher, who played him in the rest of the seasons. I never really got into this show, so I'm giving them a shout out just because they were a live action Superman. They were Superboy. But like, I remember when this show aired, and I would like stop and watch parts of it when it was on, but I never felt the compulsion to seek out this show when it aired and be a faithful viewer of the show. So it never pulled me in like that, but if it was on, it was interesting. Number seven, George Reeves. And he's here at number seven because I like The Adventures of Superman, but it's not like I've spent a ton of time with that show. I only have season one on DVD, and then I've watched the first couple episodes of that, but it's a pretty good show, and George Reeves is a great great Superman, even today on YouTube, just to kind of get his performance fresh in my mind. I was watching this episode that was sponsored by the United States Treasury. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, what does that mean? Sponsored by the United States Treasury. Turns out like it was a whole episode wanting people to buy like stamps and bonds, you know, to invest in and all that stuff and support the country. It was cornball, but it was interesting because Superman saves Lois Lane from some peril. And then he's like, well, Lois, uh, I would stay for the cops, but I have an appointment and I don't want to be late. And he flies out the window and he flies to this elementary school where he teaches the kids the importance of wise investments and saving their money and explains it in a way that even me could understand it. And I'm listening to this and I'm like, wow. Did you ever think about some of the super things that you can do for yourself? Well, like saving up the money for your own vacation or for that new bike that you wanted so much. This is so hokey, but what was so cool about it was that you see in this character, in this Superman, he made it a priority to be a light to these kids, to be a good influence on them, and he made it a priority to be there and to teach them something good. And what that did for me was it put a kind of innocence and brightness on this Superman and on this portrayal of Superman that I feel like has been lost in recent years. So I really do respect that. Number six, Brandon Routh. I do like Brandon Routh as Superman, but he wasn't his own Superman. Superman Returns was meant to be kind of a sequel boot, a direct sequel to Superman 2. So rebooting Superman 3 and 4, this was supposed to directly follow Superman 2, which didn't make sense in a lot of ways. You know, those first two Superman movies were in the 70s, this was the early 2000s, and now they have cell phones and flat screen computers, not typewriters, and it's like, what? But that, that, while that's weird, Brandon Routh was a great Superman. He had the look, so he looked like the character, he looked like Christopher Reeve, and he did a good job playing that Superman. And that kind of brightness and stuff, he was able to capture that pretty good. My one big thing about this, though, has nothing to do with Brandon Ralph's performance, but it has everything to do with Superman having an illegitimate child. I mean, I know in Superman 2 he was with Lois, but then, like, within a month he would have had to have left Earth for five years and then come back to find out he had an illegitimate kid. I mean, yeah, I get what they're trying to go for with the story and stuff, but I just, I cannot wrap my mind around it. Superman doesn't have an illegitimate child. Number five, Tyler Hoechlin. 
I like this guy as Superman, and I'm going to be honest. Like, I stopped watching Supergirl after season two. Just not a fan of all the weird soap opera drama when I want to watch a freaking superhero show. But when I was watching those first two seasons and they are bringing Tyler Hoechlin on, I just went, nah, it's not Superman. And that was me judging by looks alone. When I was only looking at pictures and stuff, I just went, and there he is in full costume. And I'm like, you don't fill that out. You, you, you're not, I can't see it. You're not Superman. But as soon as that guy started acting and talking, I went, oh, never mind. There it is. Yep, that's Superman. Like, he is a fantastic portrayal of Superman. And even the small stuff that I've seen, I think he's done a great job in the role. I mean, it's been a long time since I've seen this one episode in season two of Supergirl, but it still stands out in my mind where these drones were unleashed on the city to separate Superman and Supergirl, and they were going for innocent people, and Superman went and stood between this family and the bullets and took all the bullets, blew up the drone with his eyeballs, and his kid's like, awesome, or I don't know, kid made a remark. Superman turns around at the family, smiles and winks and takes off and just to me what that did is it just communicated a love of humanity and warmth like it just was a great communication as to who this character was and I also remember when Tyler Hoechlin first steps on the show and like his character Superman is meeting the other characters of the show like he took the time shook their hands acknowledged them and nodded with a smile like this Superman smiled and he took the time to get to know these people and so that was really refreshing to get this characteristic of Superman and I feel like Tyler Hoechlin has done a great job and I would be incredibly interested in a CW Superman spinoff led by this Superman like I would love to see him in his own show number four Dean Cain Lois and Clark so speaking of Superman having his own show the new adventures of Superman was awesome. Four seasons of pure, cheesy, hokey, cornball stuff. But if you really sit down and watch this show, it is excellent. And Dean Kane is the perfect Superman in this show. He looks the part. He is the part. My biggest negative is the way he plays Clark Kent and plays Superman. They're exactly the same. I cannot imagine that he's sitting there working in that office, working in his cubicle, in a sea of reporters, and they can't see through those dang glasses. He doesn't do any difference in those personalities between Clark Kent and Superman. And to me, that's like my biggest grievance with that. But beyond that, it's it's forgivable because his portrayal is excellent. The show, like, it doesn't have all the CGI and all these big Superman battles that it can do. So it gets really interesting with its story and how it digs into Superman lore and character stuff. And it does a really great job. So I, I really enjoyed Lois and Clark. Number three. Tom Welling, Smallville. I, I just love Smallville. Like, there's so much about this show that is so good. And when it's good, man, it pulls out all the stops and it's freaking amazing. And when it's bad, it went bad. But when it went good, man, it really went good. And Tom Welling is a strong, strong Superman. I really enjoyed it. I mean, season one, when he first appears, like he's really good at the role, but he really, as it, the show progressed, he grew more and more into that role and got better and better at it, man. I mean, like he, ah, uh, this show had so many great portrayals. Michael Rosenblum is like my favorite Lex Luthor. I am the villain of the story. Lionel Luther was an amazing character to add. The relationship between Lex and Lionel was magnetic. Every time they were on screen together, like it just sucked you right in. And then Lionel and Clark and that relationship and them adapting a kind of father-son relationship, pushing Lex further into the darkness, watching Clark and Lex be good friends and then watching them slowly like drift apart because of Clark's secrets and all that stuff. Trust me, Clark. Our friendship is going to be the stuff of legend. But then seeing how much Clark loved his friends, and that was how they communicated his love for humanity, was in how much he loved and he cared about his friends. And so they did a fantastic job with this portrayal of Superman. The biggest weakness with this Superman is he's a victim of his own success. Like Smallville was the most successful show on the CW at the time, so they wanted to drag it out as long as they could. But the appeal of the show is it's a pre-Superman Superman. So when you get to season eight, it just gets tedious. In season eight, he works at the Daily Planet as a mild-mannered reporter. He has an alter ego as the Blur, and it's like, this is so infuriating! But mostly, seasons eight and nine, it's full of these bold steps forward and him becoming Superman. And then, oh no, and 18 steps back because, well, we gotta keep the show going, so Superman has to cry again. And it, ah, oh, the Lana thing. I, I, I did not like Lana. And the drama of Clark and Lana drove me nuts because I'm like, no, no, he's with Lois. 
Why do you want me to believe in this relationship when I know it's not going to work? Why do you want me to believe in this relationship when I know he's with Lois Lane? Why are you making a soap opera out of this? Why are we doing the will they, won't they? They won't! And so finally when they got her off the show and filled her body with kryptonite, it was like the most blessed episode ever. But then you get into season 10 and it's like the perfect Superman origin story because it's all about that stuff that makes him whine and cry and kept holding him back, all that being uprooted and him finally manning up and becoming Superman. And it's one of those examples of where the show went right. It went right. So overall, I love Smallville and I think Tom Welling has an excellent portrayal of the character. Number two, Henry Cavill. Yeah, I really liked Man of Steel and I loved Henry Cavill's performance. He looks the part, he sounds the part, he is that part, man. Again, same problem with him as Clark Kent. He does not differentiate between Clark Kent and Superman at all. When you get into BVS, they are the exact same person and he's wearing tight clothes. So it's like you can still see his physique and it's like, clearly this is Superman wearing glasses and a button up shirt thinking that's enough. I like Superman being in a dark and gritty world. I like the realistic reaction to people being afraid of Superman, being afraid of a being like that existing in the world. I like the fact that it was a minority that liked Superman and it was a majority that absolutely feared him and borderline hated him and didn't want him to have any part in anything. Like, I, I thought that was a very realistic take. But what they were missing, and I feel like they were missing it in BVS more than in Man of Steel, because Man of Steel was a great... I have to find myself. Where do I fit in with this world? Aliens have showed up. I got to save the world. But in BVS, what compels him to put the cape on when the world fears him this much? So what they really missed in BVS was showing his love for humanity and showing the hope that he had for humanity. I mean, they even talk about it in Man of Steel. You will give the people of Earth an ideal to strive towards. You will help them accomplish wonders. And you never saw him carry on the hope that soon they would join him in the sun. And we never kind of reference back to that where we see like he's carrying that in his heart and he has hope for humanity. So even when they fear him, he sees the best in them. And so I feel like they could have explored that aspect a little bit more. But otherwise, I didn't mind the portrayal of him being in a darker, more realistic, gritty world. And how would that world really react to his presence in it? So I didn't really have too much of a problem with that. Even when he killed Zod, like he agonized over that. He didn't want to kill Zod. He agonized over it. So like there were things that I really liked in the portrayal, but I definitely see where they could have brightened it up just a tad. <laughs> Number one, Christopher Reeve. What can one even say about Christopher Reeve as Superman? He is Superman definitively. For, for me personally, that is the definitive Superman. He is bright. He is cheery. He has that innocence about him. You see that he's got a true love for humanity and he's proactive, not reactive. Well, he sort of reacted to the helicopter about to fall off the Daily Planet roof and Lois about to meet her demise. But as soon as he was revealed to the world and he caught her, which was a fantastic scene. Easy, miss. I've got you. you you've got me? Who's got you? <laughs> and then he just went out and saved the city. Like he didn't like go back and hide. No, he's like, oh, well, what else can I do? So he goes and, and you know intervenes in a police chase and catches the bad guys. He goes and catches a burglar climbing up a building. I mean, they just had fun. And then he's in the Fortress of Solitude talking to Jarrell and he's like, I, I enjoyed it. And Jarrell's like, you enjoyed it. So then he and Jarrell discuss the path of why have a secret identity. He didn't even want to have a secret identity. And Jarrell's like, Look, humanity will exhaust you if you don't have a secret identity. You need a secret identity so you can be free to live among them and let yourself recharge. And then when they really need you, you can jump out and save the world. So that's why you need a secret identity. And like the way they dived into that stuff was just so perfect. But Christopher Reeve, the whole time, he had that perfect mix of just innocence and brightness and hope and strength and confidence. I mean, he was the guy that made Clark Kent a different person, wearing the baggy clothes, really nasally and clumsy. Superman, deeper voice, standing up straight. There's something I have to tell you. I'm really... Um, I mean, I, I was, uh, at first, really nervous about tonight. This was the Superman that got me not just into Superman, but into superheroes. When I was a kid, this was the definitive superhero movie 
for me for a long, long time. And this is what got me interested in Batman because I wanted to see how does somebody else dress up in the cape. This is what got me interested in all the other superhero stuff I'm interested in because Superman was just so freaking awesome. So there's a nostalgia there for me. There's bias there for me because he holds the special place in my heart. But Christopher Reeve is my favorite Superman, period. So how would you rank these live action Superman's worst to best? I can't wait to have this conversation with you and see your rankings in the comments. While you're there, hit the subscribe button to become a Durbanian and hit the bell by the subscribe button so you're notified for my next ranking video, theological analysis, movie review, reaction video, or anything else I do here. I'm Durbin. Thanks for checking out Durbania. <laughs>